Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 2 for September the 8th, 2019. We're in Unit 1 today entitled, God is Faithful. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Heart's Desire. Our devotional reading is taken from Psalm 99. Background scripture is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 1 and 1st Samuel chapter 2 verse 10. We'll be studying today from uh, the book of 1st Samuel uh, chapter 1 verses 9 through 20. Our key verse reads, Eli answered, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. That's 1st Samuel uh, chapter 1 verse 17 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to recall the story of Hannah's desperate longing for a child. Secondly, to reflect on your own often unspoken longings for God to intervene in your lives. And then thirdly, to pray with confidence for God to provide what is best for you. We have three outlines today that are part of our lesson. Uh, the first outline is entitled a devout prayer uh, the second outline is entitled a devout prayer misunderstood and then the third outline is entitled hearts desire fulfilled we certainly thank God for our uh, being able to share our lesson with you today uh, part of history Israel's history we thank God that uh, we have been able to see the handiwork of God through uh, the Old and the New Testament. So we want to uh, hope that uh, you will get get your Bible and uh, be prepared to uh, take some notes and uh, write some scriptures down that we're going to share. Um, and prayerfully that we'll be able to be encouraged today. Uh, even in our prayer life as we visit this uh, familiar story to us uh, it's often good to go back and see what the Lord has done in our lives and it's also good to go back and see what the Lord has done for others uh, even when our requests were not granted uh, we were able to see how God worked in others lives and and that became the source of our encouragement so we want to share a little bit of our biblical context it's very important to understand uh, some foundational points for this lesson today but uh, first and second Samuel record events in a period of transition for Israel following the turbulent days of, of the judges uh, but First Samuel begins when Israel was at a low point spiritually and economically. Uh, this period was characterized by corruption within the priesthood, the absence of the Ark of the Covenant from the tabernacle, uh, rampant idolatry and blatant dishonesty among judges. So instead of a unified nation, a weak confederacy existed among the twelve tribes. So within this dismal state of affairs uh, among God's chosen people, a ray of hope was shown uh, with the birth of Samuel. Uh, he was Israel's last judge who became both priest and prophet. Uh, through Samuel, uh, God moved Israel towards spiritual uh, transformation and national uh, unification. So I want to keep those things in mind. Uh, this history, um, certainly as we deal with the outline of this book of First Samuel, we note that uh, the book of First Samuel um, uh, chapters one through seven deal with uh, Samuel particularly, and then as we move to chapter eight through uh, chapter 15 we deal with uh, King Saul and then from there um, from chapter 16 through chapter 31 uh, um, we uh, 
uh, provided an account of Saul and King David. And so uh, this period, uh, as we read about uh, Israel, was very challenging for the nation of Israel. Um, and this account, as we look ahead to Israel's first king, um, uh, which is uh, King Saul, but I want to remind us as we look at this lesson, some of the undercurrents uh, of this lesson uh, deal with God's will. Uh, and that's something that uh, we are uh, seeking every day of our lives, our Christian lives. We should be uh, learning and seeking to learn how we are to determine God's will uh, in other words, if we are doing the things that God would have us to do or not, uh, have we presumptuously uh, uh, moved about uh, in our affairs that uh, have been more about us and less about God? So we see this play out uh, in this account. Uh, we pick our first outline up from the book of First Samuel. Uh, chapter 1 and we're going to begin at verse 9 through uh, verse 11 uh, but we hope that you will read the entire account uh, we we understand that uh, Elkanah he uh, had two wives and uh, uh, Penina had uh, was able to bear children uh, but Hannah was not and so this saint this became a source of contention among these two women uh, one looking down on the other uh, but we note here that uh, uh, as we deal with this first outline that uh, so Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk uh, now Eli the priest uh, sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Verse 11, And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou would indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but thou wilt give unto thine handmaid a man-child then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life and there shall uh, no razor come upon his head that's from the King James Version so we see Hannah moving uh, in prayer about her circumstance of not being able to have children um, keep in mind Israel's plight at this time and so uh, as the text uh, uh, unlocks for us today um, we are introduced to uh, the parents of Samuel and the condition that existed among his father Elkanah and his his wives Hannah and Penina so uh, uh, his father was a godly man as suggested by his consistent obedience to the requirement that all males worship at the tabernacle at specific uh, times. So although he set a godly example for his family, an unhappy relationship existed uh, between these two women. So this was the root problem that uh, Hannah's inability to conceive children and the subsequent taunting she suffered from Penina who had born children to Elkanah so uh, this situation was compounded uh, because Hebrew man's posterity was tied to his producing a son uh, to perpetuate his name there's a lot going on here um, uh, in the mindset of Hannah uh, wanting to uh, have a child, wanting uh, the legacy of her husband to continue uh, through the son. Uh, uh, but what we see here is that she took her situation to the Lord. And, and I want us to understand that when we uh, inquire of the Lord, 
uh, it's important to understand that as we uh, uh, relinquish ourselves to the Lord and, and, and we cry out to the Lord, what we're saying to God in essence is that Lord, you take this situation, you do with this situation what seems best. Whenever we uh, uh, inquire of the Lord, we must understand that God is looking at, number one, our petition, uh, yes, and he is also looking at the counsel of his own will. And we're going to share some scripture with you a little bit later on to help us unpack that because I think sometimes uh, uh, when we go to God in prayer, we like to order God around. We like to tell God what he should do uh, uh, and how we think the matter should work out. But uh, sometimes our prayers are not answered and sometimes God says no. Uh, and sometimes God chooses to do things differently than our prayer uh, uh, uh uh, would dictate and so we must be prepared that the will of God is always in play if you will when we go to God in prayer the counsel his purposes about everything and everyone is always uh, 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 paramount uh, in in terms of how God looks at things um, if you look at uh, the first uh, the key verse for the book of 1 Samuel uh, is taken from um, 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 22. And I think we get some perspective here about uh, how God looks at things and what God is requiring. And that's important when we go in prayer. And I want to read this to us today so we can understand. This is the key verse uh, for the book of 1 Samuel. Um, and it's taken from 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. The Bible says, But Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? That's a question. Uh, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. So in this key verse, at least we get uh, some reflection here about what the Lord's will is. Uh, the Lord's will, if, you, if I can uh, frame it in this fashion here, it's better to obey the Lord than to offer the Lord multiple sacrifices that are devoid of obedience superficial sacrifices with no depth no substance so uh, what the key verse is highlighting for us uh, is that it's better to heed what the Lord says it's better uh, to do what the Lord says do in other words God's will is better than our intellect God's will is better than anything that we could attempt to offer God uh, and so his purposes uh, because he is able to see everything and know everything and understand all the inner workings of everything then his will is better for us uh, I'm laying this foundation because as we uh, look at this first outline and what Hannah and how Hannah is praying she is asking the Lord for a blessing but she wants to give the blessing to the Lord for his purposes she has relinquished her selfish uh, appetite if you will uh, to uh, say that uh, I, I have a son now and, and now I can be like everybody else. That is not her mindset here. Her mindset is, is to for God to look on her affliction of not being able to have a child. Uh, she's weeping. She's praying. But she makes a vow in the 11th verse that if the Lord would look on her affliction and remember her and bless her with this child, 
I'm going to give it back. And so uh, what do we do um, in tradition today when children are born in the house of the Lord among Christians? We offer that child back to the Lord uh, for uh, his purposes to to bring the community of believers together to help us shape the, the life of this child to obey uh, the Lord to rear this child in the fear and admonition of the Lord this is what Hannah is doing she is sacrificing her blessing her desires and she has linked this blessing and uh, uh, of a son of a child and she vows to give this child to the Lord all the days of his life keep in mind Israel is devoid of something at this time Israel needs direction at this time uh, 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 Israel needs someone to help them uh, uh, or redirect their spiritual uh, uh, awareness to who God is and what God requires of this nation uh, uh, and so this is a very powerful prayer here so uh, uh, the context here uh, the commentary, if you will, says during one of the family pilgrimages to Shiloh, Hannah took her plight to the Lord in prayer. She recognized that he alone could change her circumstance. So her prayer stands out as an example of total trust in the Lord and selfless commitment to his will. We don't know how God wants to work a particular situation, but we trust his understanding and his purposes for it even if it doesn't work out the way we would like it to uh, we we submit uh, to the will of God and so this is what she's doing here so she identified uh, 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 the uh, him as the Lord of hosts an expression of his power to use unlimited resources at his disposal on behalf of his people so secondly Hannah's prayer involved total submission and reverence as she presented herself as his handmaid she didn't think herself uh, uh, to be more than she was and so uh, keep in mind that God is looking at the countenance of her heart the motive uh, of her request and so uh, it's, it's beautiful to learn uh, uh, some things from history uh, in terms of how we should uh, uh, handle God in prayer. So the fervent prayer of this distraught woman shows that God is concerned about every aspect of our lives and that we can take every concern to him. So our motives must be to glorify and honor him with the blessings received from him in response to our request. That's very important, our motives. Do we think about that when we go to God in prayer? What are, what are our motives uh, 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 concerning our request that we make unto the Lord? But James offers some perspective, and I want to go there very quickly because sometimes when we're quoting from James from the fourth chapter uh, we just say uh, 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 typically that uh, you have not uh, because you ask not and but there's a lot more that James says in the fourth chapter about that and I want to read this uh, uh, from verse 1 this is James chapter 4 verse 1 uh, to verse 4 uh, so James starts out this way where do wars and fights come from among you do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members these are questions you lust and you do not have you murder and covet and cannot obtain you fight and war yet you do not have because you do not ask you ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss 
that you may spend it on your pleasures. So he goes on to say adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. I'll stop right there. But it's important to understand this prayer that Hannah uh, prays. God takes into account what does she want to do with this son? Does she want to have children so she can go back and 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 uh Panina, her and Panina can go at it about their children that they would uh, uh make war if you will conflict about now that i have a child you have nothing else on me or you can say nothing negative about me i don't feel like a curse anymore because i don't have children why does she want this child she gives us the very answer she wants this child yes but she's going to give this child to God for his purposes and sometimes we don't want God involved in our blessings we just want them so we can uh, uh, use them for selfish purposes and so God gets no glory out of that he gets no honor out of that and subsequently our prayers we, we pray amiss in other words, we don't get anything. It, it sort of fizzles out, if you will. God is not hearing it. Uh, and so uh, this is very important that we understand that our motives are in play when we are talking to God, when we're asking God for things. But the question is asked here, what makes it possible to ask God to grant the desire of the heart and then offer it back to him? So when we start talking about the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit will always lead us and guide us into the will of God he will always lead us and guide us in petitions that heaven will hear if you will and if we had some time uh, Romans chapter 8 um, this is a little bit later uh, verse 26 and 27 will give us some perspective uh, about this and so we want to keep uh, in our minds that what we are doing and what we are praying and asking God for, that he gets the glory out of that. That it's not selfish. It's not that we should uh, 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 point at others that we were able to obtain and now they can't. This is not why God blesses us. And so um, our second outline is entitled, A Devout Prayer misunderstood and this is taken from first Samuel uh, chapter 1 verses 12 through 18 so the Bible says and it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth uh, now Hannah she spake in her heart only her lips moved but her voice was not heard therefore Eli thought she had been drunken and Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. Verse 15, And Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thy handmaid for a daughter of Belial. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief I have spoken hitherto. Verse 17. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. So a lot here to unpack. Uh, but again, uh, here, this woman is praying. She's pouring out to God uh, 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 in her heart. Uh, and sometimes uh, you can pray uh, and you should pray however the Spirit of the Lord is leading you uh, to pray. So her posture in prayer in this account, she's not verbal. She's speaking to God in her heart. Uh, her lips are moving and so Eli thinks that somehow she's intoxicated but she's talking to God 
and it's noteworthy here as she talks about how she is praying she has not uh, been drinking and she said I have poured out my soul before the Lord that inner man uh, God knows the depths of our desires he knows our thoughts and so we can uh, uh, we can speak to God in a way uh, uh, as she does and as she did in this text uh, and we don't always have to uh, verbalize we can speak to God from our inner man uh, uh, from our spirit if you will from her soul she's crying out to the Lord uh, uh, about her circumstance can I just say this about Hannah she's desperate she is extremely desperate uh, God understands the desperation in our petitions God understands the longing and the the quiet distress if you will of our petitions and how we have been calling on the Lord day and night and sometimes we shed tears because that is the the effect that is the desire uh, uh, um, that is the desperation of our uh, uh, longing for the Lord to deliver us to uh, to help us and we we feel uh, somehow if God doesn't intervene we won't make it and so uh, this this is where uh, we have to really hope uh, in the Lord we have to protect our hope in the Lord we have to believe and be confident that he will hear and that he does answer prayer but I understand where she is and so uh, though Eli does not understand uh, uh, what's going on with this woman uh, but she has taken everything to God in prayer she has taken her desires to God and 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 this is why many times we uh, we weep when we pray is because our heart is on the table uh, uh, our circumstances have driven us to shed tears uh, we long for God to deliver us to heal us to strengthen us to bless us we are dependent uh, upon him and that's where she is and so she is just really laying her case out before the Lord and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that and we encourage you to do that uh, to take your uh, situation to the Lord uh, it, because what Hannah understands is that, that nobody else can help her now her husband cannot help her. Uh, uh, nobody around her can help her. And so, but she understands and she has been worshiping and she's been praying and she's been crying out. There's nothing more blessed than to see a woman taking her case to the Lord. I, I have witnessed this over my life watching uh, my mom and my grandma and these type of individuals who have just prayed and poured out to the Lord for their children for their families they're weeping to God about their circumstances so this is what it takes it takes us uh, having the courage uh, and 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 going to God with all our heart with all our mind our soul and our strength and that's what she's doing and so verse 18 of this passage says uh, she said may your servant find favor in your eyes and then she went her way and ate something and her face was no longer downcast let me say this to you when we have delivered and we have uh, carried our burden to the Lord if you will God has a way of changing our countenance and I believe she is confident at this time she is confident that God is able and so that will change the countenance uh, we trust God to do uh, uh, what he said he would do he is no shorter than his word and so if we believe God and, and we trust God then our countenance should be such that we believe and we are confident and we can go ahead and praise God now because we know he is going to fulfill uh, his promises to us I guarantee you that that when we praise God let me say this to you 
we all have things that we have asked God for. Even as I speak to you now, there are petitions that I have laid before God. But I'm going to go ahead and praise him anyway. Uh, uh, I'm not going to sit uh, idly by, if you will. I'm not going to be moping around as though God is not able, even if he doesn't answer me uh, 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 to uh, the specifics that I have asked or petitioned him. I'm going to praise him because he is God. And because there is none like him. And I have seen God in my life do things. And sometimes the Lord has said no to me. He has not answered all of the prayers that I have asked of him. And then some, thing he, some things that he answered, he did them according to his will. And so I bow in humble submission to his will. And I continue to praise him anyhow. This is where... Hannah is her face is no longer sad that's very important for us to remember but the question is asked here we often confess that God can do something why then do we pray and then continue to worry we have all done this I have done this I have continued uh, sometimes to to be concerned even after I have prayed but I'm going to give you some scripture that will help us to understand there's some reasons why uh, that 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 we uh, feel this way and we act this way and we continue to carry the load even though we have carried the load to God uh, I want to give you uh, and I'm going to read this the first epistle of John uh, chapter 5 verse 14 and 15 I also want you to take a look at James chapter 1 verses 6 through 8 and also Hebrews uh, 11 uh, chapter 11 verse 6 but in the first epistle of John uh, chapter 5 verse 14 John says these words now this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Verse 15, and if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. A couple of words just pop out to me when I read that, the confidence. One of the reasons why we continue to worry sometimes is because we don't or we lack the confidence in that prayer we lack the confidence in it because we may not understand what God's will is this is another thing that pops out when I read those verses so it's very important that we be confident and as we gave you James chapter 1 we should not and we uh, 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 we can't doubt that God can do the thing uh, we can't uh, 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 fear if you will as though God is unable to to help us in a timely manner these are some things that cause anxiety to come about in our spirits when circumstances come upon us and God has not answered uh, answered our prayers sometimes we get afraid we become afraid and sometimes we are anxious uh, we're not at peace we're not at rest but John says here, confidence and compassion in prayer. Confident, being confident. Are you asking God, not really sure that he can do it? Are you asking God to do something that you know that he is able to do? Uh, verse, uh, Luke chapter 1 verse 37 says, nothing will be impossible uh, uh, for God. So we have to keep these things in mind. And worry sets in uh, because we are continuing to doubt that God is able to do a particular thing. Uh, and so I like the way Hannah went away from praying and talking to God about this situation. Her countenance changed. When you deliver, you're able to get that off of you, that burden that you have uh, uh, been praying to God and you have uh, dumped if you will that petition on to God you should feel better uh, you should think better you should look better that you were able to cast your cares on him 
because he cares for you. So it doesn't mean that God uh, uh, will do exactly what you ask him to do. Sometimes he will and then sometimes uh, 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 he will not. Uh, but if you look at Jesus at the cross, he felt like in his flesh that he had been forsaken. He asked that question. Why have you forsaken me? He had not been forsaken. God's will was being performed even while he thought in his flesh that God had forsaken him. Uh, so Hannah does not know what God is going to do with her son. But she's going to entrust her son to God and let God use her son at his discretion. Uh, this is symbolic when we give our lives to Christ. We use that term, right? Uh, Romans chapter 12 tells us that we should do this, uh, uh, give our lives to Christ, but we don't know how God wants to use us. We don't know how many days God wants to use us, but he can be trusted to deliver you. He can be trusted to safely bring you to where he is. I hope this makes sense for you today. All right. So we also want to give you First Chronicles chapter 28 verse 9 to help uh, in your study. And our last outline is entitled Heart's Desire Fulfilled. This is taken from First Samuel uh, chapter 1 verse 19 and 20. The Bible says early the next morning they arose and worshiped before the Lord and then went back to their home at Ramah. Elkanah made love to his wife Hannah and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel saying because I asked the Lord for him. So God has answered prayer. God has fulfilled uh, her request. God has brought about the thing according to his will uh, that he wanted to do with this woman and her circumstance. Keep in mind the context of this lesson. If you know anything about this story, God took this young boy that Hannah gave to him offered to him after she weaned him God took Samuel and used him to help in the overall uh, 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 circumstance of the nation of Israel Samuel became a great man for the Lord he became a great spokesman for the Lord he became a great leader for the Lord. He became a blessing for the Lord. He became a blessing for Israel's circumstance. So God blessed Hannah and God blessed Israel with what they needed at that time and that at that period of decline. So God used him in a dual capacity. He was a priest, right? and he was a prophet. God used him in a magnificent way to help redirect the spiritual dilemma that the nation of Israel was in. So when do you do or what do you do uh, when you have the assurance of God's power, provision, and presence? These are a few things that I wrote down we continue to worship, we trust him, we wait, we are at peace, we rejoice, we thank him. When we are confident, these are the things that we engage in uh, that help us um, and encourage us even as we understand that we have prayed and called on the name of the Lord. So the name Samuel has been interpreted as heard from God or name of God. So Hannah knew that God was truly the source of this blessing and the answer to her prayer. And as we close today, I just want to encourage you today. I hope this story, this account has encouraged you today. 
Keep on praying. Keep on calling on the name of the Lord. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't quit every time, every tear that falls from your eyes. God knows about it. Every weight that you are carrying uh, in your spirit about your circumstance, God knows about it. So we have had these experiences uh, and that uh, have resulted uh, in a greater plan uh, 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 at work than originally uh, we requested of God. I had no idea that God would use me as a preacher, though people said that to me. But when the Lord delivered me and raised me up, he put his word in my hand and followed it up by saying, I trust you. God has put so much confidence in you and I that we are now children of God and it's incumbent upon us to continue to praise God no matter what he does, no matter how he answers or may not answer our prayers. He is still God and beside him there is none other. I'd like to close today with this prayer. Dear Father, become the complete desire of our hearts so that when we bring our needs to you, we will seek only your will for our lives and your ultimate glory in every answered prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we hope, trust, and pray that uh, we have said something today to encourage you, that you may continue on in your journey uh, as a Christian in peace and in bold confidence that our God still reigns. So until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.